Hey, how's it going everybody? In this series, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started working with HTML. Then a little bit later on, we'll cover CSS. So why don't you go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey, if you enjoy my videos, please be sure to subscribe because subscribing is free. Just like how this video is free. Help me out. Yes, I'm guilt tripping you. That is all. Why should you learn HTML? In today's age, people spend way too much time on the internet, myself included unfortunately. Knowing how to create or otherwise manage a website isn't a bad thing to know. Heck, add it to your resume. It really can't hurt. Even if you're not interested in web development as a career, almost every business has some sort of online presence. Knowing how to manage that online presence could convince a potential employer to hire you over somebody else. So why not? HTML is an acronym for Hypertext Markup Language. The general idea is that certain types of tags, also known as markup, is used to convey to a web browser how some content should be displayed. Usually tags are in pairs with some content sandwiched between them. Header tags are typically used for titles. P tags are used for paragraphs of text. A tags are used for hyperlinks. HTML adds structure to a web page. If we were building a house, you could say that HTML is the foundation, the skeletal structure to support all content on a website. Then there's CSS. CSS means cascading style sheets. It's a language that adds style to a web page. In our house analogy, CSS would be equivalent to the decorations, design, and colors of the interior. To begin working with HTML and CSS, you'll need a modern web browser. You can use Google Chrome, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, Safari. Those are all fine. You'll also need a text editor as well, such as VS Code. It's free software that functions as a workbench for us to write code. In this next part, I'll show you how we can download and install VS Code. To download VS Code, head to this website, code.visualstudio.com. Look for whatever operating system you're using and download that version. I'm running Windows, I will download the Windows version. Then I will open it when it's done. Accept the agreement. Yes, I did read it that fast. Next. Next. I'll create a desktop icon. Next. Install. Launch Visual Studio Code and finish. We need a folder to hold all of the documents related to our website. Go to Open Folder. I'll place this folder on my desktop. New. Folder. I'll name this folder Website. Select Folder. There we go. We are now within our Website folder. I'm going to create a new file. I will name this file index.html. Whatever your homepage is going to be, I would recommend naming it index.html. Most servers return the index file as the homepage. So it would be good practice for us to name the homepage index. Now what we're going to do is install the live server extension. Go to extensions, look up live server, and install. Basically what this does is that when you update your HTML file, if you have a web browser open, it's going to update automatically. It'll save you some time. All right, everybody. Now what we're going to do is fill in our HTML file. At the top, what we'll do is add a set of angle brackets, then type this. Exclamation point, doc, type, HTML. This is a declaration that this document is an HTML5 document, which is the most recent version. Then we'll create a pair of HTML tags. We'll need an opening HTML tag and an ending HTML tag. You can tell that this is an ending tag because it has a forward slash. Most tags are in groups of pairs. That's if there's typically content between them. This pair of HTML tags represents the root element of an HTML page. Between these two tags, we will add a pair of head tags. The head element contains information about your web page, such as a title. Let's add a title to our web page. Title, add a closing tag. Let's set the title of our web page to be My First Website. Now, what we'll do, right click on your HTML file, then open with Live Server. Here's our web page. The title says My First Website. Just to make this easier on us, I'm going to place our web page side by side with VS Code.
When we save any changes, we can see that update automatically. The head element contains information about your web page, whereas in the body, let's add a pair of body tags after the pair of head tags. The body element contains visible content in your web page. Between our body tags, let's add a pair of H1 header tags. H1 defines a large heading. I'll add some text. This is an H1 heading. I'm going to save. That should update my HTML document automatically. This is an H1 heading. Let's try H2. Add a pair of H2 header tags. This is an H2 heading. Let's do H3. H3. This is an H3 heading. H4. This is an H4 heading. Then we have H5. This is an H5 heading. Typically, header tags are used for titles or other large text. Let's discuss paragraph tags. If you have a paragraph of text, you can place that within a pair of P tags. Some text goes here. If you need some sample text to work with, if you're using VS Code, you can type lorem, then tab. This will create some garbage text for you. I think it's supposed to resemble Latin. If I were to copy everything within the set of paragraph tags, then save it, paragraphs are separated with a line break. Otherwise, if you do need a line break, you can type BR, meaning line break. So this is a self-closing tag. Pairs of tags usually have some sort of content between them. With a line break, that's a self-closing tag. We don't need a closing tag. So add as many line breaks as you need, wherever you need them. So that's a line break. There's also horizontal rule, which is HR. Think human resources, HR. That would add a horizontal line across your page. That might look pretty good after a title. Paragraph tags don't care about any spaces or new lines. I'm going to put all of this on separate lines, just so it's more legible. So when I save, nothing appears to happen. Even if I were to add some line breaks between these sentences, nothing appears to change. You could always change your paragraph tags to PRE, meaning preformatted, as in preformatted text. That would retain any line breaks or spaces within these tags. It's up to you if you prefer the P tags or the pre tags. Now, the last thing I'm going to discuss are comments. Comments aren't displayed as output. They're usually used as notes for yourself or for other developers. You would type a left angle bracket, exclamation point, two dashes. Wherever your comment ends, you would type two dashes, right angle bracket. This is a comment. So when I save, nothing appears to happen. Comments are used for yourself or for other developers that are looking over this document. All right, everybody. Well, at this time, let's go over an exercise just so that we have a solid foundation and really remember everything. It'd be good practice for us. We're going to create a separate HTML file that displays the lyrics of a song you like. So let's create a new HTML file. Let's name this file lyrics.html. Again, we'll need to add this declaration, doc type HTML. That's a declaration that this document is an HTML5 document. Then we'll need a pair of HTML tags. We'll need a head element and a body. Let's add a title to the head of our document. Title. Let's set the title to be my song lyrics. Then we will open this HTML file with live server. My song lyrics. Pick a song that you like. Within our body tags, let's add an H1 element. This will be the title. Copy the name of your song. Place it within this pair of tags. So that's the title. Add song by the name of the band or artist. I'll use H3 header tags. That's slightly smaller than H1. You know, maybe H4. 
I think that would be better. I'll add a horizontal rule. That's HR. I'll add a pair of P tags. Take all of these lyrics, copy them, and paste them within the pair of P tags. I'd like to retain the spacing. Let's change the P tags to PRE tags for preformatted text. That's much better. Let's add one line break after our horizontal rule. One last thing I'm going to do within the pre-tags, I'm going to add some blank lines between some of these verses. There we go. That's pretty cool. I think we have the hang of basic HTML now. In the next topic, we'll discuss hyperlinks. Hey, if you're enjoying this series so far, please be sure to support me by smashing that like button, leave a random comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.